I'm Jacob McClelland. People who take care of loved ones who suffer with Alzheimer's face numerous emotional and even physical challenges. Here to talk about, pro, about programs to assist caregivers is Carol Dippel from Lutheran Family and Children's Services. Carol, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Thank you for having me. Well, tell us first a, a little bit about the, the REACH program. What exactly does this, does this program do? REACH is a program we are starting at Lutheran Family Children's Services. It stands for Resources for Enhancing Alzheimer's Caregiver Health. It is targeted towards the caregiver of those caring for individuals with Alzheimer's. Why, why is it that, that, that caregivers are the ones that, that need somebody to, to reach out to them? Um, we have over 69 million caregivers in the United States and the majority do a fantastic job of caring for loved ones but they don't take care of themselves. Um, from data, we see that 62% of those, 72% of those miss doctor's appointments of their own. Over half of them suffer depression. Over half of them don't get exercise. Um, they're not eating balanced diets. And so we're reaching out to those caregivers to try and help them to take care, care of themselves in order that they can continue to care for their loved ones. Well, what are some of the activities or programs that you have for, uh, for, for caregivers? Okay, let me tell you about the REACH program first. Sure. And this program is designed for one-on-one -on -one, um, instruction to the caregivers in the caregiver's home. And it is targeted to uh, go for about six months with every other week type visits of about an hour and a half to two hours going over caregiving concerns that they may have caring for their loved one and how to care for themselves, how to manage their stress, how to take better care of their own emotions, anxieties, worries, depression. So in addition to those nine in-home visits, we also have telephone contact with them and a support group. So, in addition to the self-help that they can get through the in-home visits, we also have a support group open to anybody, which meets on the second Monday of each month at Lutheran Family Children's Services from 6.30 until 8. And we do have two groups, which meet one on Monday and one on Thursday for the person with Alzheimer's or dementia, and this allows the caregiver respite four hours each of those days that they can do what they need to do to try and take care of themselves. Do you, do you have any examples of, of caregivers who, who, have, uh, who, have, who have needed this help, who have needed this assistance? Um, every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> every one of them who comes to our support group um, indicates, you know, that this is such a help to be able to hear other caregivers who are going through the same kinds of situations as they are. They get ideas from those other people people and just the camaraderie and fellowship that they have with each other knowing they're not battling this alone there's other people doing similar things um, but then those who are bringing their loved ones to our groups Monday and Thursday groups express how much that respite means to them to have those four hours to do things they maybe wouldn't be getting done with shopping or baking banking or errands or just doing something they enjoy doing for that time. So they, they all do share that this is very helpful to them. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about the, about the social aspect because I imagine the social lives for caregivers must change oh, completely whenever does. they take care of a, of a loved one. It does. Um, it, I mean, w with any caregiving, the social life changes, but with dementia and Alzheimer's, it changes in another sort of way because a person with dementia or Alzheimer's may not be evident to the general public. Maybe only the immediate family realizes that there's this going on. And so the friends and family, other family members may not realize what the caregiver is having to do. And so they become isolated from their friends, it becomes uncomfortable to be with friends. Friends are uncomfortable being with them. Um, just the whole, um, concept with what's going on makes it difficult for them to socialize the way they used to be able to do especially I mean early in the process but then as it goes on it gets even more difficult and I, and I imagine having the support network to reach out to of other caregivers must help out with it, that it, tremendously for them it does the support group helps the caregivers and the groups we have helps the individual with dementia because that person also being aware of their memory loss, they become uncomfortable socializing and being in, in peer groups, and so they isolate themselves also. And this gives them an opportunity to be with others in the same situation. What is it about Alzheimer's and, and dementia that makes caregiving for, for, for loved ones who suffer from, 
from, from, from these issues so much more challenging than, than, than other types of caregiving? I think one of the, the initial things is the fact that it is not so obvious. Um, if you see someone with um, a handicap, a, vis a visible physical handicap, vision impairment, a hearing loss or something, a person knows right away that they have this impairment and they need to be um, treated accordingly. Um, sometimes someone can mask dementia and memory loss extremely well uh, and it makes it difficult sometimes. You can be relating and communicating with them and they can be acknowledging and carrying on conversation and you think they know what you're saying but then you realize that, that they haven't. So I think what makes it really difficult is the fact that people aren't aware of what's going on. And then for caregivers and for a person I think there's still a, a stigma, there's an embarrassment, there's thought that this is some kind of a mental illness and they're ashamed and it just makes it more awkward to talk about I think for a lot of them. Are there costs associated with the, with the REACH program for folks that want to participate? You're right. With our REACH we're asking for $15 as a fee for those home visits which are an hour and a half to two hours in length and there is a very extensive uh, three ring binder manual that's only $10. Um, we also, for our two respite groups, ask $25 for each of those four-hour days, and there's no cost with the support group, which meets once a month. Well, what region do you serve? Um, Cape County. We serve all of Cape County um, with these services, and it's limited just because of the time factor and distance traveling and everything that we do try and limit it to the Cape County area. How long have you, have you personally been working with, uh, with folks with Alzheimer's and, and dementia and their caregivers? Um, I've been with the agency for 25 years and we've had the support group um, from the beginning when I started. So I've been with the support group um, for a long time. The two-day programs that we have for memory loss started five, six years ago. Um, and the new REACH program that we're doing now is just a new program that we're getting started this, this year. We've been talking today with Carol Dippold from Lutheran Family Children's Services. Thank you so much for coming on to talk oh, with us. Thank you so much. Ahead, what's shaking on the New Madrid seismic zone? That's coming up on Cape Chronicle.